Hello and welcome, my name is Hendrik and I am outside with the Sony G Master 14mm f1.8 lens. The last few weeks I have been in Northern Norway and Lapland photographing the early autumn northern lights with this lens and it has been an absolute joy to use it for astro and northern lights photography. I love wide lenses and this 14mm f1.8 lens is an absolute beast. It is made for landscape and astrophotography and in this video I want to show you its capabilities for astro and northern lights photography. I have been using it the last three weeks for astrophotography in northern Finland and northern Norway and it has been an absolute pleasure to use this lens. I really love the wide field of use, the ease of setting the focus correctly and of course the f1.8. I even go this far as saying that I prefer this lens over my own Zeiss Batis 18mm f2.8 lens which is also amazingly good for astrophotography. Before I continue a quick disclaimer Sony loaned me this lens and I already returned it to them. In that sense many thanks to Sony for loaning me this lens. The only problem is now I now want to buy my own. If you are new to astrophotography go and jump and grab your camera because I will walk you now through all the settings you need to photograph this spectacle. I will wait over here so just pause the video grab your camera and we'll put the settings together on. The most important thing when photographing the northern lights is to put your settings in manual so that you can control the shutter speed, the aperture and many other settings. So make sure to switch your camera to M. We also want to make sure to have the focus on manual so in case you have your focus still set on autofocus make sure to put manual focus on that allows us to use the focus ring on the camera to set the focus as we are using manual focus it is very helpful to put a focus magnifier on because that way you can zoom in on stars when you are setting the focus and also put the focus peaking setting on and I put my peaking color on red because I find it a lot easier to see than some of the other colors that are available like yellow, blue and white. So I choose red because I find it a lot easier to see when I am focusing at night on the stars. It is here on the small screen or also in the EV view a lot easier to see red. So focus is really really important when we are photographing the northern lights. Over here we already see now my camera is focused on these wooden locks over here and with the focus wheel on the lens I am able to adjust the setting. We see over here that now that what is in focus is turning red on my little screen and I have a focus magnification of 5.9 so it zooms in on the complete composition just on the point that I set my focus point on. We are able to move this around with the little trackpad over here if we say I want to make sure that this piece of bark is sharp then I can move it there and move the focus. Now when we're photographing these stars it is tempting to put focus on infinity and that is usually in my experience a really bad thing to do because then the stars will be unsharp like the image over here. So you always want to have something shortly before infinity but with the focus magnifier on and the focus peaking color on it is uh, really easy to see when a star turns a really sharp small dot. That usually means the focus is on point and then you just take the image and check that the focus is correct and then you can continue shooting. Really important is to always change the focus again when you are moving your camera on your tripod. So if you are taking a photo and then want to take a different composition make sure to set the focus anew. 
as we have manual focusing on we are using the wheel on the lens and it is very easy going and in my opinion very easy also to find the correct focus point with this lens and this camera setup if you're using focus peaking and the enlargement. These are both settings you will find on pretty much every camera and it is really something that makes your life easier when you are photographing the stars. Which brings us to two other settings that we need to adjust when we take photos. One is the exposure time. So anything between a few seconds and 30 or more seconds with a bulb is something that you can use for taking photos of the stars. My preferred setting is when it's a good show, something between two and four seconds. And if it's a weak show, then you can go up to 10, 15 seconds and then still get very nice photos of the Northern Lights and the stars. The second thing that is very important, and in this case it is manually here on the 14 millimeters f1.8 lens, is that you can adjust the aperture. The smaller the number is, the more light gets into the lens. So in this case, we want to go down to 1.8. Now, if you feel that you can do with something a little bit less because you gain a little bit in overall sharpness for especially the corners of the image, then you can go to something like 2.8 or two or somewhere in the middle. But in my experience, photographing with this lens in the past three weeks, that is not really an issue, especially on a camera like the Sony R4, which has a super high resolution, which means you can crop in your images significantly without losing any quality. So for example, you can just zoom in and have still a really great image that you can print out in a large scale without losing any quality. Another setting that you need to adjust when you're photographing the stars and northern lights is the ISO. Usually uh, during the day I have an ISO of 100, but if I go to night photography, I go up to 400 to 800 depending on what I feel is necessary. If it's a really dark night and if I want to, for example, take a video, I can go up to uh, 12 or 25,000 or more, depending on whatever it is that your camera is capable of. If you have a Sony A7S III, then you can go up to um, really high ISO levels without having a lot of noise in your image. But with cameras like this one, I prefer to stay in the 400 to 800 range, which gives me very usable images without a lot of noise. Now, as the camera sensor is a lot more sensitive than our eye, the camera sensor is a lot easier in helping spotting where northern lights are. So if you have your camera settings put on, for example, in this example with ISO 400, f1.8 and a 13 second exposure, and you just point it in the direction where you believe there are northern lights, then you will be able to see them really easily and then you can compose your image. Now, one of the reasons we're doing this all in broad daylight and preferably inside is that if you have your camera set up correctly, you still can switch to another setting. But then when you go out, you switch back to M and then your settings are ready for photographing the Northern Lights and you don't need to fuzz around with it later on. That's a lot more easy than doing it all in the dark and maybe missing the best Northern Lights. Another setting that you want to change when you're photographing the stars is the noise reduction and also the in-camera stabilization. You want to turn these off because your camera will either way be on a tripod and you will be using uh, either a timer to take the image or a remote and then you're either way not touching the camera so you don't need any noise reduction or in camera stabilization. You want to turn this off because if you, for example, have noise reduction on, the camera takes a second image after the first one um, to calculate the noise reduction. And that takes a lot of time. For example, if you take a 
15 second exposure and then the camera takes with noise reduction on another 15 second re exposure to calculate the noise reduction so you want to put noise reduction off to be able to take more photos faster now the final setting to talk about is white balance I usually set my white balance to sunny. One reason is that it most accurately represents the northern lights as I have seen them in the sky. The second one is that the plasma particles which are uh, creating the northern lights in our atmosphere are coming from the sun so I find that it is uh, yeah logical to use a sunny setting. I have friends and colleagues that use a shady or a cloudy setting for their white balance which also works fine. Something that I would completely avoid if possible is uh, the artificial light settings for white balance because in my experience they really ruin the image. Of course, if you photograph in RAW, you are able to adjust the temperature or the white balance of the image in post-processing as well as everything else. However, if you start out with the right settings, a sharp image, the correct white balance, you have a much better image to start with and that makes post-processing a lot easier than starting with something that is not the best image you could have taken. And here's a couple of quick tips when you're going out to photograph the northern lights. Now the first one was already this whole video. Set up your camera in advance so that when you head out everything is ready and pretty much the only thing you have to do is setting the focus of the camera to the stars that you want to photograph. That way everything is ready and you don't need to fuss around in the dark and cold. In my opinion, autumn is a much better time to go photograph the northern lights together with spring because it doesn't get minus 20 degrees cold at night. It's a lot more comfortable to stand around in like uh, plus two, three or four degrees depending on what time of the year or what time of the autumn you are going to photograph them than if it is minus 20 or more. Winter is super beautiful and it is a really good reason to come to the north over here to Finland, Norway and Sweden to photograph the northern lights. But it is really cold so you also need to have all the right equipment with proper clothes and yeah, uh, good gloves and it makes just fiddling around in the cold not as fun as the autumn. Whatever season you are going out, it is really useful to have a spare battery with you and keep them close to your body so that your body heat can keep the battery warm. With these big Sony cameras that I'm using and the big batteries that they have, uh, battery drainage in cold weather is less of an issue but I have had enough clients that use tiny cameras with tiny batteries and those drain pretty much in an instant so you want to really have uh, spare batteries with you if you're going out and you don't have a really big camera body. Now if your lens has a lens hood and the Sony G Master 40mm f1.8 has an integrated lens hood always make sure to use the lens hood especially in winter when there might be some spin drift snow um, the lens hood protects the lens from getting snow or rain or whatever on it and it is really useful also for protecting the front element of the lens now another thing that is really important is to make sure that your tripod is really stable. It can be really windy and in that case you want to make sure that your tripod stands still even in high winds. Usually tripods have some kind of hook at the center column and you can hang your backpack for example from that hook that pulls it down and makes it a lot more stable than if you would have just let it stand on its own because if your camera tips over with an expensive good lens over and the lens breaks that's pretty painful and expensive to get fixed. So make sure that your tripod is stable at all times even if you feel it's not windy because always somebody could trip over it in the night.
Now I've been talking about focus already quite a bit with focus peaking and focus magnifying and everything and I want to drive this point really home because nothing is more annoying than an unsharp image when you come back home and put the images on your computer. So always make sure that the focus is spot on. It's better to spend a second or five more on making sure that the focus is correct and sharp and then you have an unsharp image that is not as pleasant to view as a sharp image is. This has happened several times to me and it is really annoying if you come home and then you realize your image is not sharp. So make sure to check focus constantly because that's really what makes or breaks the image. And then if you are composing your image also take your time. If you want you can put ISO up to ridiculous levels as you saw earlier simply because then it is easier to see the foreground and background of your image and then it's a lot easier to adjust the composition of your image and then you can just put ISO back down to 400 or 800 or whatever it is that you are using with your camera and then you can take the image that you want to take. And that's it already from me and the Sony G Master 14mm f1.8 lens. If you enjoyed this video please leave a thumbs up as it really helps the video and channel and if you want to see more of these kind of practical videos make sure to subscribe and hit the bell next to it so that you don't miss out on further videos from me. In that sense, thanks for watching and remember, life is better outside.